like as i have uh, shown this picture here uh, then another one is like common rose finch uh, so there are several such birds where you can uh, have a very relaxed birding along the path and also in the fields uh, to uh, you know just uh, places to walk around and uh, try to play quite whatever possible so when i went to chitkul for the first time i didn't have much information about the birding per se uh, so i was like you know i always try to keep my eyes open like for whichever birds come in and whichever good perch or even if it is not a good perch i make it a point to take photograph because you don't know sometimes uh, your field id could be wrong and uh, these pictures which we uh, get uh, would uh, kind of serve uh, as a uh, tool birds later so i always try to click all the birds uh, which i see um, that is one such one habit which i always follow and understand until i am very sure i do not uh, delete uh, any of the pictures i take time to review it and then uh, um, uh, kind of uh, make sure that okay uh, whether this i have seen this or i have not seen like that so chitkul is, is such an amazing place so pink broad rose finch is very good out there um and then uh, i have seen flocks and flocks of yellow breasted green finch um which is basically not so rare you get to see it in um, many places even in the northeast but you get very beautiful perches there you know like the the dream perch like uh, flowers and like very beautiful um, kind of uh, you know for uh, like uh, small small um, twigs and uh, like very uh, very very small very very attractive perches i would say so this is like a low breasted green finch and then another incident which i remember uh, not incident another pleasant experience which i would say um, uh, was about a lifer uh, in chitkul um, i do not have the picture here but it's about the uh, fire capped tit so uh, i was just birding around and i saw these kind of like wobbler kind of birds so that time it was like uh, uh, my life was for me so i didn't know what exactly the bird was it looked uh, so it was not in the breeding plumage it was like immature birds and also um, the birds uh, which are yet to uh, gain the breeding uh, that male breeding uh, plumage so we do not know what exactly it is so i clicked uh, those birds and i what i noticed was that the bright yellow ring around it that beautiful catchy eyes so i clicked some pictures that day and then later on i realized that oh it's a fire king and my uh, it's my lifer so those fields were full of them so it was a big flock which i saw there uh, so that was one then uh, i think this i this i had seen earlier so the green finch was not a lifer but pink broad rose finch was a lifer then a white billed red star was another a uh, good uh, bird to see out there um, white billed red star or hobson's uh, blue robin it is very uh, difficult to see in other parts of the country so one of the best places to make very good photographs is uh, chitkul um uh, it's uh, the birds are like uh, sort of cooperative and they come uh, on the top of the bushes so that we can make a very clear picture um another uh, area to see this bird is like uh, mandala in arunachal pradesh but there also sometimes you get pictures but sometimes you cannot get but chitkul if you see the bird if you wait i think it's almost guaranteed that you get a good picture so this is one uh, beautiful bird which you can see in that particular area then common rose finch that's another subspecies there out there in chitkul in that area and and in that uh, like himalayan region so it's very very beautiful reddish kind of or like scarlet kind of red and in those green fields it is so beautiful to see them so uh, common ranges uh, common rose finches would be uh, would be uh, like in a very in very good numbers out there uh then himalayan ruby throat is another species which you can really make good pictures um uh, so himalayan ruby throat uh, i think it is one of the best areas to make good pictures um and we have we could also get very good pictures of the chinese ruby throat in in ladakh uh, areas and also in uh, manas uh, manas also and also in kaziranga 
and also one record uh, i think in himachal pradesh we had it in spiti as well so uh, these uh, two birds uh, are like two subspecies are like uh, very good uh, in that part of the uh, of the country but uh, chikul i have found that this is this is very very good the himalayan ruby throat is excellent um, uh, out there and they come on top of the bush and small small boulders so that we can get very very good light and a very good photograph um uh, then um moving to the other part uh, of uh, himachal pradesh this is uh, sarahan uh, which is in the shimla uh, district um, so this picture is of uh, ultramarine flycatcher um, so the sarahan area is also famous for something else it is we have the pheasantry there and that is the uh, one and only um, uh, breeding center for western uh, tragopan so sarahan is very famous for its pheasantry and it's a very adjoining ma'am you're mute would you please unmute um still you're mute oh Oh, so sorry. Okay. Um. So um. I didn't realize that. Uh, no, no, no. I was uh, mute. Uh, yeah, so it's only for a few minutes, uh, uh, madam. So it's okay. It's fine. Let okay. So where did it. I stop? So where did I stop? The current. Okay. This one only. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, sorry for that. Uh, I don't know what had happened. I didn't click anything. I don't know why suddenly it went on mute. Not uh, at all. Not at all. But yeah, so Hodgson's uh, blue robin uh, or the white-billed red start is a very good bird to see, and it's very rare to see in other parts of the country. So um, we can get very good images uh, of this bird in um, in Chitkul. um they come and uh, perch on the top of the bushes and in very good light uh, so it's it's very good to get that image there another important uh, place to see this is in the eastern part of the himalayas where we have um uh, this breeding in um, mandala but there also uh, the images um, sometimes you get uh, if you are lucky but sometimes um, uh, it would be under the bush but i found like you know chitkul is is better uh, to make pictures of this um, that is uh, what i was telling there and then common rose finch uh, uh, this one is like um, uh, uh, plenty of uh, common rose finches there we have that beautiful subspecies with a scarlet kind of red uh, plumage so that is very good in uh, june so against the green backdrop it look really uh, nice out there then himalayan ruby throat um, it's one uh, very good bird where we can make good pictures um, uh, in chitkul uh, you get to see them um, on the top of the boulders and bushes um, another uh, subspecies or another separate species i think now it is the chinese ruby throat uh i have uh, i think me and uh, dr abhinav uh, we had a good re record first record from speed uh in 2017 um and uh, other areas to see the chinese uh, ruby throat is like in the eastern region uh, in manas as well as in kaziranga hmm. so uh, madam but for madam, the Himalayan, there is uh, it, uh, one problem ha huh? yes yeah, so actually like someone yes. tried to present so like your presentation became small can you please just stop the presentation and present again okay let me see okay, okay. yeah so uh, i think like please uh, nobody please uh, accident we click on the presentation so this happens because now nobody able to see the presentation okay so madam so you can uh, yeah okay um yeah. is it okay now yeah yeah, it? yeah it's fine it's fine it's fine okay <laughs> okay uh, so it's uh, himalayan uh, ruby throat um, which i told about and then sarahan 
so Sarahan, um, I was mentioning earlier, I was on mute, uh, so, so sorry for that. So Sarahan is very, um, very known for the pheasantry. Uh, we have the one and only um, Western Tragopan uh, Conservation uh, Breeding Center out there. So Sarahan is very famous for that. And Sarahan is in the Shimla district of Himachal Pradesh. And uh, that surrounding area uh, is very good for uh, birding as well. We get to see the Western Himalayan uh, bush wobbler, and also uh, we get to see um, the common birds around there, like the bar tailed a tree cape creeper, uh, then uh, ultramarine flycatcher. So the apple orchard uh, would be like in like a full bloom and a full like in a fruiting time uh, rather. So sometimes you get to see uh, these birds in very wonderful backdrop. So you can see uh, the uh, apple backdrop uh, in the in this picture uh, so that is one beautiful area for birding which i really enjoyed then narkanda in uh, is another good area in himachal pradesh to bird out uh, and uh, narkanda top is uh, like i have seen the white cheeked nuthatch there and that is also not very easy easily seen nuthatch uh, so uh, narkanda is a very good area for uh, these nuthatches um, another good area is uh, the west, uh, the Great Himalayan National Park, and also Chitkul. Chitkul also have seen white-tailed, uh, white-cheeked nuthatch. So that time in Chitkul also, it was my lifer some time back. So I was very happy to uh, find these lifers on my own uh, without the help of a guide. So Chitkul is one such area where you can just go around uh, and also along the road to bird. So um, this is from basically from Narkanda. And even Narkanda is very good for birding. Like you can start um, a walk, you, go, you can go to the top and then start uh, walking slowly down downhill. And then we get to see a lot of birds, I mean, flock of them. And scaly bellied uh, woodpecker is another beautiful species of woodpecker, which we can see. It's mm -hmm. one of the best uh, woodpeckers. Uh, so we can see uh, scaly bellied woodpeckers there. Um, then another area in Himachal Pradesh, which is really enjoyable for bird birding is like Soja. So um, this is a red-headed bullfinch female bird. Um, but uh, the one at uh, the time when I uh, saw it... Madam, sorry for <laughs> Sorry for the interruption again. Uh, again, same thing like we know we need to stop the presentation and, and bring it. Okay, I'll, I'll keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right, please don't present. Uh, All those who are uh, participating kindly, please uh, cooperate. I think it's uh, even by mistake. Don't present. Um, uh, don't click the present now option because if you are clicking the present now option, Madam's presentation is going small and your screen is uh, going to appear. So kindly refrain from doing this thing. Let us uh, uh, go on smoothly with this. Okay, so again, so we are here on the red headed bullfinch uh, slide. So, this is um, uh, from Soja again. Soja pass is very, very good for birding. Um, you get the common uh, Himalayan birds, uh, you get to see a flock of them, uh, flocks of them, um, then woodpeckers. Um, red headed bullfinch was one like you know, very good. Uh, uh, for flock which I saw that day and uh, they were feeding on a small bush uh, which is very close to the road so I made these pictures sitting in the car and it was uh, like very easy kind of an image which I could make that day. Um, then uh, move, moving on to Chopta, uh, many of you might be um, familiar with, might have been familiar with uh, with uh, Chopta. It's a very um, very important uh, birding destination. A lot of birds and with comparatively easy kind of birding. Uh, most of the time we can walk on the road or also to sit in the car and bird. Um, so uh, scarlet finch is one a very good bird which you can see in that area like Makumad and then Chopta. So this is one image which I um, basically um, made from Makumad, I think. Uh, yeah, it is somewhere in between. So I have put it as Chopta. Uh, so I have been actually searching for this bird for quite a long time because um, Whenever I got to see these birds, it was like either in the thickets or it was somewhere, somewhere else, um, so far away or something like that. So this was the time I really could get very close to it and there was a flock of them. And this is the male bird of the scarlet finch. Um, 
then munsiyari uh, munsiyari is uh, another great uh, birding destination if you guys uh, plan to go uh, sometime sorry and uh, it's it's a very good area to see um, satire tragopans uh, in the western himalayas um, uh, Rajesh Panwar is um, is very well uh, versed with that uh, with the kind of birds out there, and uh, he I think regularly takes uh, uh, people uh, for, to those areas. Um, so one such day when um, I really wanted to see, I actually went for the cheer pheasant out there, but uh, we were rewarded with very good sightings of uh, of uh, actually I can say a flock of thragopans. So we saw about six or seven of them towards the fag end of the day and all females so it was like amazing to see uh, and uh, rajesh made a very good video out uh, uh, there that time so um, i was very very happy to see uh, satyar tragopan in munsiyari um, and the munsiyari is very very good for other uh, small birds um, also like uh, uh, small birds as well as lamar gear um, bedded vulture is very very good um, kind of uh, trying to feed on the on the bone like after repeatedly dropping it on the on the rock and so it was nice to see it uh, but i couldn't get a very close uh, shot out there by but i really tried there so munsiari is really very good for uh, these kind of birds like upland pipit then uh, i have seen also um, uh, intergrade of norm no man's and uh, no man's thrush there uh, so that also uh, and also dark breasted thrush then spot uh, winged rose finch these are all very very good in munsiari uh, region and also chestnut thrush there are so many birds which uh, we get to see out there and again very beautiful perch and also comparatively easy birding uh, but the bird which I really would like to go there would be like the cheer pheasant. So the cheer pheasant is an endemic bird uh, in, in that region for, for our region and uh, it's not very easy to make good pictures of the cheer pheasant elsewhere. So uh, my first uh, sighting of the cheer pheasant was in Vinayak uh, in, near Pangot and it was like they were, it was, there were uh, six or seven birds and they were like on feeding on the slope and it was really really down below the slope and I had a very small lens there so uh, that was my lifer then but very happy to see that uh, but um, yeah to make very good pictures I would really suggest uh, people to try to uh, go to Munsiari um, another place to see this is Great Himalayan National Park. Rola area is very good, uh, but uh, for making the picture, it's uh, Munsiari is wonderful. Sometimes you get to, uh, you might have, some of you might have seen very wonderful pictures of Rajesh and also Rohit Nayal. Uh, these guys, they generally go out there and uh, they kind of get very very good shots uh, in open perch. For the, for me, this uh, shot. Uh, is, I felt this way when this uh, pheasant, male pheasant, uh, was trying to climb up the rhododendron tree and look uh, like, you know, to have a very good vantage point kind of thing. And then I saw the female also uh, climbing up the same tree. So I got uh, both of them in the same tree, but I had a 500 mm in my hand. So I made separate images and this is an image of the male. Um, then Corbett uh, in Uttarakhand is also very very good uh, for birding um, people generally go there for tiger sightings but uh, it's a haven for birds uh, uh, my first birding uh, trip outside karnataka i think was to corbett that was in like 2008 and i was so mesmerized by the colors out there and uh, you know it really inspired uh, me to uh, do a lot of birding again later uh, so we get to see a lot of birds like uh, uh, and especially like a great slaty woodpecker that is very good out there and also in Kala Dungi area near near uh, Nainital is also very good for uh, great slaty woodpeckers uh, but my um, uh, you know one of the greatest uh, sightings uh, were from uh, Corbett um, then I mean first one of the first sightings 
Uh, then corbett is very good for Nepal rain babbler, a very small bird, uh, but amazing bird to see. And it's one of the best area to see uh, uh, the rain babbler, this Nepal rain babbler is the corbett area and the adjoining uh, places. Uh, then, um, yeah, several, several birds like uh, the commoners, like uh, uh, Rufus bellied Neel Tawa, uh, then yellow bellied Fantail, then all these uh, birds like uh, the the crested kingfisher, uh, then the plumbeous red start, white capped red start, all these birds, when you start uh, birding new, uh, these are very, uh, very, very uh, beautiful birds and very different kind of birds. Uh, when we try to do uh, birding from south up to north, these are like uh, new, new birds for uh, birds. And so when I saw them for the first time, I was so, so happy. So that is one <coughs> beautiful uh, place to bird. Then um, spectacled finch. This is also a very rare um, finch. Uh, so sometimes you get to see them uh, at very, very close quarters in Dharamshala, Triand uh, uh, area um, in Himachal Pradesh also uh, when, it, when it snows, uh, when, it's, when it basically snows, they come down. Um, but um, even in Uttarakhand, when I shot this uh, image, it was like a lot of snow. And there was like small patch uh, where it was like a field and uh, that is how i made this image but uh, most of the time uh, we see these birds in the like, very hard winters uh, uh, like uh, just when the snow is around that is the february like january uh, december to february kind of uh, time frame uh, it's not very easy to see this bird when we look for it we may not find it actually so i had a tough time to find uh, this bird and finally i got very good shots uh, from um, chopta as well as uh, from uh, shitla Ked in uttarakhand and also later when i birded in uh, yusmarg in kashmir i got to see them um, and also in uh, great himalayan national park uh, that time it was a juvenile bird, I an mean, immature kind of bird, uh, birds. But um, these are like, you know, like you can't basically uh, try to get a location for it, um, where exactly they would be, uh, they would be showing up at what time. Uh, but I think off late, the Shitlaked area is good to see spectacled finches. So this is a male bird and the female bird is like yellowish in plumage but awesome birds to see. So this is spectacle finch is also called, the new uh, name is red browed finch. Uh, then another bird which we uh, really kind of uh, want to see in our lifetime is like Western Tragopan. So we have four Tragopans in our country. So Western um, Tragopan and uh, the Satayat Tragopan have presence in the Western Himalayas. So this is basically from um, Great Himalayan National Park. Uh, it's it's madam it's sorry gone. again <laughs> it's gone <laughs> for some time but i didn't want to break the floor that's why i didn't tell <laughs> <laughs> no problem so i'll just uh, stop sharing and uh, so here comes okay better now yeah, yeah is it okay back. now yeah yeah it's back Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. So, so Western Tragopan is uh, one of the uh, very uh, good birds to see. Um, so this is from Great Himalayan National Park. So we get to see Chigam area. That is what I have heard, but I have not seen uh, it there. Uh, but Great Himalayan National Park and Dharangati National Park in, in Himachal Pradesh is, are are good areas to see this, and um, it's not a very easy bird. Uh, it requires a lot of tricking up and also a lot of perseverance. Um, so I had really, really tough time to see this bird. It's one of the bird which has taken uh, my most, you know, kind of energy and perseverance, patience, whatnot. But I'm happy to uh, finally see it. Uh, so this is uh, one image which uh, we got uh, of the Tragopan from uh, Great Himalayan National Park. And also that area is very, very good for cochlear pheasant and also Himalayan monans and also 
good for the hogson's tree creeper it is not very easy that tree creeper is not very uh, easy uh, to be seen in in the western parts uh, so a uh, great himalayan national park as well as yusmarg uh, are the best areas which i have seen uh, where we can make very very good pictures um and also white throated tit is another good bird which we can see in great himalayan national park uh, also spectacled finch that that also is very good there uh, so white throated tit is not an easy bird to see uh, so sometimes you get to see them in jalori pass in himachal but most of the time i think a reliable uh, reliable location would be uh, the great himalayan national park it's also one of the rarest uh, uh tit species which we can see then uh, moving on to kashmir um so we have a uh, little bit turn uh, in the dal lake and the nikin lake there so um, one of the reliable locations uh, for this little bit turn in our country is uh, uh, this are uh, basically the nikin lake and the dal lake Uh, so last year we had i think a very good sighting uh, people had very good sighting from gujarat uh, it was an adult uh, bird but this is a sort of an immature bird and uh, uh, i had seen adult birds also in uh, nigin lake so when we want to really look for a uh, little bit turn i think we should head to uh, kashmir uh, so um, this this was shot from nigin lake and otherwise also that lake is very very productive uh, to make very good photographs um, so this is common starling um, though common starling is common out uh, in like you know delhi uh, that basai area uh, area and also in many areas in the north um, i have found it very difficult uh, to make good pictures and i think dar lake uh, i mean nigin lake is one of the best areas where you can really get up close in a small boat uh, so that we can sort of uh, get a, a near ground uh, level picture uh, and also i've seen uh, a very good number of common to common kingfishers there like on all sorts of perches like lotus buds there lotus uh, you know stems what not like in a, a lot of them and i'm sure like in the migration time there might be very good sightings of some rare birds as well like the great red warbler and all that i have not seen it but i am hope i i'm sure that these birds might be visiting there uh then um new to people like us uh, would be the eurasian jack daw it's like a crow species but a corvid species but uh yeah so uh, is the uh, the screen gone again um uh, dhruv no it's fine ma'am okay um, so yeah yeah so sure yeah so the so um one great uh, place to see the um eurasian jack daws it's a, like um it's a corvid uh, species with a it's a small smaller size than crow but a very beautiful gem like white eye you know so it, it's it's a very different so first when we see it you you would see you, you would kind of feel it as a crow but it's not a crow it's a jack daw so those kind of birds we uh, are also very good in uh, in that uh, lakes um then tony owl it's one of the rarest owl uh, in in our country uh, distribution wise uh, we get to see only in that part of the uh, the area, area like in dachigam uh, national park so when i first saw it it was like very many years back but that time i couldn't get a picture of it because it was like sort of night and i didn't have um, a torch or like a flashlight uh, so that i can make an image of it um so that was only a sighting for me that time and then later on like um, um, after 8 uh, years or 9 years i finally got to see it in september uh, 2018 so these are also very very beautiful birds like um uh, like when you uh, look at look uh, look them uh, look at them through the scope the sporting scope or binoculars you feel that they like shining like a pearl it's like that fragile kind of plumage you you get to enjoy it the best uh, looking through the scope so i was fortunate uh, that day because i think uh, suresh sir um, suresh alaman uh, sir had uh, come with us so he had uh, that uh, very beautiful video cast 
camera, the Lumix camera, so I could I could get to see it uh, through uh, the uh, video. I mean, through through his uh, through this his equipment. So it was really wonderful to see it. Um, then another um, a rare uh, netage uh, for India uh, we, uh, in that area in the mix is the Kashmir netage. It's very difficult to see it. Some Sometimes we are fortunate, sometimes it is very, very difficult. Uh, for me, it was to make a good picture, I think uh, I had taken a while. So this was in February and uh, to read the that, that smart area where uh, this was seen earlier by J.C. Tan and also some of um, uh, that, that area was full of snow. So uh, it was really, really tough to uh, basically go through the snow to uh, search for this bird. But fortunately, we could we could get very good sighting along with the white cheek attached and as, as well as uh, white-tailed attach, I think. So um, all these birds uh, are like very good in this mark. Um, and also last, I think September, I had seen a very good numbers of uh, Berlin also in Imagine Pradesh. But Yusmark also is good uh, because I had seen them in September in very good numbers in the in the pine trees. Um, so Kashmir Attach is a very important bird. Then another one is the large uh, spotted nutcracker or the Kashmir nutcracker. This is also an endemic bird species, is Yusmark. So there are like big uh, pine trees out there and uh, nutcracker, the spotted nutcracker. Then uh, you can uh, understand that these nutcrackers are around. So they are usually seen very high uh, uh, up uh, in like bare uh, top, I mean, on the, on the top of the bare uh, branches. Uh, so we uh, got to follow them uh, to try uh, make some good pictures. So that day uh, we were trying our level best to get some good pictures, but you know uh, we always always missed it uh, because by the time we were kind of reaching the area, they were flying off. So uh, I was very disappointed that day, and finally when we were just taking a uh, taking a uh, a short break, you know, just for a chit chit, chit chat. Uh, then we heard this very close the calls, and then they were feeding on the ground, and it was so amazing sight to see. And after that much of like uh, strenuous uh, search, I felt very good uh, to make a picture of this uh, at eye level. So uh, this is different from the other spotted nutcracker, which we uh, see very commonly uh, in that that this is more whitish and more spots on the belly and also very big whitish kind of bird. And also the beak is like very wedge uh, shaped and thin, uh, thin and wedge uh, shaped compared to the other nutcracker. OK, uh, then let's move to the trans Himalayan region. So Spiti, I uh, have mentioned earlier, um, Spiti is very, very good for very rare birds, like, uh, um, um, like uh, what is that? Uh, uh, like um, Chukar Patridge is a very common one. And uh, Spiti is like very good for street row swing. Uh, then uh, uh, like, uh, what is that? Uh, Man, uh, red mantled rose finch. All these birds are very, very rare to see elsewhere. And also another uh, good bird to see in Spiti area is the pied vetier. So they, they breed there. So pied vetier records are elsewhere are very, very rare. But uh, Spiti area is very, especially the Pooh and the Pin Valley area is very good for pied vetier. So um, that is one very good bird to see in Spiti. And the chukar partridge is a very common bird out there. But I wanted to show this because I really like the frame of like, you know, a kind of a hazy frame out there. So uh, that is uh, one common bird in Spiti. Then uh, another uh, good bird to see in Spiti is red-fronted rose finch. And uh, these are like very, very difficult birds. When we look, try to look for it, very difficult to get good pictures. Sometimes uh, you end up with uh, having like a bird uh, pictures of the female birds. Then it's very difficult to identify. So uh, getting a male bird is makes our life much easier. 
So Spiti is very good for all these rosinges and the pied meteor. Um, then uh, going to Ladakh, um, we have this other side of the mountain is Ladakh basically. So we get to see very, very good birds out there, um, Tibetan snowcock as well as Himalayan snowcock. So um, these are uh, like seen generally in the passes uh, at an altitude at, of about like uh, 3,500 to 4,500 or probably about 5,000 meters. So uh, it, sometimes you uh, come across a flock of them, uh, many birds, uh, and sometimes you don't get to see them at all. So for me, uh, Tibetan snowcock uh, was my uh, uh, lifer and my first trip to Ladakh. So it was like, I this bird was not in my radar at all. And I didn't know that, okay, this bird exists. Uh, I had checklists, but still I, I thought it's a it's a bird to be searched for later on. You know, I didn't have it in my mind at all that time. But then uh, when I was traveling from Sokar to Somariri, uh, we got to see them on the boulders, nicely perched. They were alert, but they were not scared. So this was made with a 300 mm lens uh, from the vehicle and they were there and I got, you know, that time it was like, a, because the bird was so new to me, I was so surprised, you know, okay, we could get to see a snowcock like that. Then I became greedy. Then I wanted to uh, basically uh, look for the Himalayan snowcock, but that took years for me uh, because um, uh, I thought, okay, I got the Tibetan uh, snowcock by fluke and my first trip and Probably that would be the case with the Himalayan snowcock also, but then that wasn't the case. It was like years of search and uh, not only years and also different months. So I first tried to go in like the usual birding time in Ladakh and Spiti area, like uh, June through September. I never got to see them. Then I tried uh, towards the end of the, uh, like in, in, in hard winter, like December, I thought, okay, the birds would be like, you know, it would be so much snow out up there. So these birds would be like, you know, coming down to feed. And so I probably would get to see them in lay or like, you know, probably uh, in, in those locations near the road. So that was my hope. And uh, then also I failed. So in different months I tried. And finally, I got to see them in April. And that was also a different uh, kind of unique experience. So I was searching for this bird and nowhere to be found. And then finally, uh, one army person, uh, he had told me that, OK, uh, this, uh, he, is, um, he sometimes see this bird uh, for coming to drink water um, in, in the North Pulu area. So there is because all these birds, um, they have a definite time to drink water and early in the morning, uh, basically. So he told me that this is the time. And uh, you if you come in this during this time, I can uh, basically point out that location. That's what he told me. Uh, so we were very happy. And then we got back to lay. Um, and then early morning, the next morning, we started. And then we uh, crossed the Kardugula Pass uh, to go to uh, North Pulu, uh, basically. Uh, then uh, uh, what happened was that uh, when we were just going down uh, from the Gardungla Pass, uh, there was a, a truck, huge truck, which is stuck in the middle of the road in the snow. It was like very, very difficult kind of situation. Uh, I knew that the time is very important because if you miss that time, then we are not get, going to get the bird at all. Uh, so it was like a kind of mixed emotions when we go through uh, that kind of time, you know, you don't know what, uh, it's a kind of anger, frustration, whatnot, because we know for sure that, that the truck cannot be moved because it's very difficult that the driver also is trying, he's being like it's completely stuck in the uh, in in the snow and our our car was like a small car but there was no gap for the car to pass through so that was the situation and it was really sad and then anyway we turned back and then we were about to heard this uh, call uh, like and the driver told uh, told us like uh, told me like that it's a ma'am it's a ribza ribza is the local name name for himalayan snowcock so it's calling there so it was like Wow, uh, so it's really calling. Okay, maybe it is calling. Probably it will not be able to see it, but you know, because that that was the kind of uh, hardship all three all these years. Uh, I was not very 
willing to believe it. You know, uh, the, it was just near the road, some 30, 40 of them. So sorry, I gave the location here as North Pulu, but that is North Pulu, the South Pulu. So, um, uh, so it's like uh, when we go from Leh, uh, South Pulu comes first, then Kardumla, and then North Pulu comes. So that was the uh, time when I saw these birds, about 35 to 40, 40 of them in a flock, some going, going down, some going up, and we got ample time to make uh, very good pictures. So I like, this is one of my favorite pictures because uh, uh, the bird, the snowcock, it literally living up to its name on the snow and also the, the white light reflecting on its feathers is like one, of, one beautiful frame for me at least. So that is it. And then golden eagle is another, um, a very important bird uh, which we can see out there in uh, Ladakh. Uh, it's not very difficult to see them, uh, but always we see them soaring high up. Um, you uh, you have to really look for the perches, and it's not very easy to get it perched. So for me to get it perched, I took a lot of time, uh, many years and many trips. Uh, but finally, when I got it, I thought it's basically an injured bird because it was not moving at all. Uh, so uh, I had enough time. So I thought it's an injured bird because I had reached up to basically, uh, sorry, five uh, meters uh, uh, away from uh, the bird. It was not usually raptors take off, especially golden eagles take off from far, uh, from far. But that day it was just perched, uh, and I have like you know, advanced. So I didn't want to miss a chance to make uh, good pictures because um, I, it was a long time I was searching for it. So I took the cover of the boulders. Uh, whenever I could hide, uh, I was hiding. And that is how I reached the bird. But I was so surprised that the bird was not moving. And I felt for sure that it is injured. Then I came back after making some good pictures, a full frame picture almost at the 500 mm. Uh, so I got back. Um, and then I for, a, for one last look, I turned back and the bird was not, was not there. So then I came to know it was not injured. So it was just near a stream. I don't know what it was doing. I didn't see any action there. It was just there. And then that same, uh, then immediately I saw like three of them perched in different cliffs uh, at different areas uh, in the same, I mean, different cliffs on, in the same area. So I got, a lot, got to see a lot of golden eagle perched, golden eagles perched that day. Then Lamar gear. Uh, like as I mentioned about snowcock, uh, Tibetan snowcock, but during my first ever trip to Ladakh, I got to see this lammer gear, the bird and vulture. I, I basically was taken aback by its size and it was so close to the road. Um, I was also not sure uh, about the sighting of it that time. I was not very... Um, because um, sometimes I, I do not, if I go to a new place, I do not do much homework uh, regarding my birds. Um, so I would have a checklist, but I just keep it open. Okay, whatever I see, I will see and I will make good pictures. That's what I have in mind most of the time when I go to a new location. I will have a certain idea about certain birds, but that's it. But so like that, uh, Lama Gear Vulture, I was not expecting that's so close to the road and uh, such an adult bird. So usually Lamargia vultures, when they're immature, they're black in color. And I think about four to five years it takes to, uh, to uh, get this adult color. Um, that uh, orangish uh, plumes uh, uh, is an adult bird and it, uh, the immature takes about five years uh, to get that uh, color. So that was a very good sighting. Then another bird which we really should be going to Ladakh uh, is the black-necked crane. It's an endangered species and uh, this Ladakh is one of the best breeding areas for this bird. And uh, most of the time uh, we get to see uh, uh, the bird in uh, Sokar area and also in Hanle. Uh, so I have seen breeding pairs in Hanle as well as Sokar. Uh, but um, most people uh, would say uh, maybe dependable location is Hanley. So uh, rarely people miss uh, Hanley, uh, black necked cranes in Hanley uh, from June through September. For me, I had seen it um, in, uh, in Sokar as well as Hanley. Uh, this last time when I saw it, again gone. Uh, no, everything okay. There was a question, but 
Okay. Uh, so yeah. So uh, that day, uh, this last trip um, in September, I think uh, last year, I got to see a very, uh, very good uh, breeding pair tending to their chicks, like two of them, uh, very nicely taking care of the uh, the small chicks. There were two of them, so I enjoyed it. I have some good some pictures. They were from, uh, uh, they were like very far. I didn't want to go so close because they were actually kind of busy feeding the chicks so that is uh, one beautiful site uh, which i had uh, gotten in uh, last september and also ladakh area is famous for very good uh, uh, finches like tibetan snow finch then um, blandford's snow finch then hume's ground pecker uh, or the hume's ground tit then little owl uh, these are like very good and some uh, mammals like pika and also tibetan wild ass these are very good species uh, which we get to see in ladakh uh, so ladakh is a very different kind of birding experience altogether ladakh as well as spiti uh, both the terrains are almost similar but different kind of birds for example i have never seen a pied beater in ladakh so uh, that way um, so certain birds and also red fronted rose finch and all is very difficult to see it in ladakh but spiti it is more easy uh, but in Sanskar Valley and all uh, red fringe, uh, fronted uh, rose finches are common. One of my friends told me that uh, also uh, in Pansila Pass, uh, all that area. But um, uh, so there are certain birds which we get to see in Spiti, and there are certain birds which we get to see in Ladakh. Also, um, another one, the uh, European goldfinch. European goldfinch that also I have never seen in Ladakh, but I have never missed it in Spiti. So there are certain birds which you always kind of try to look for in both these Trans Himalayan regions. Um, so um, yeah, so Ladakh is uh, is a very good area to go. Um, so uh, in the September uh, time, in the migration time, you don't know what you get to see. Uh, people see European Nijas, people see uh, Rajesh and all had seen. Um, what is that spotted flycatcher uh, and uh, very good passage migrants uh, also some uh, rec records for first records for the wood wobbler all this kind of and european green finch all these birds are like uh, i'm just trying to memorize that's why i'm taking time so but these are like you know very rare uh, passage migrants which we get to see in ladakh so we need to be really at the right time right place but these are these areas are really really promising then another common kind of bird which we can make very good pictures are uh, these uh, red front uh, fire fronted or red fronted serenes so this time when i made the picture it was like snow some slight snowfall so that is how you can see that um, background as like a little white whitish uh, blobs as it was snowing that time then um, other uh, I, another important bird which we should be looking for in uh, Ladakh, uh, in, especially in the Nubra Valley, um, uh, is the white-browed tit wobbler. It's one of the beautiful, beautiful wobbler I have ever seen in my life. So um, it's like uh, the color is like you know this is like a, a split second shot. You know after a long search, uh, the bird were, had come for some few seconds on the Sibakthorn bush. But I'm so, so glad to make this picture because uh, when you look for this bird alone uh, without the help of many guides or like, you know, many eyes, it's very, very difficult to find it. And so you try to uh, understand how the bird is, where the bird is, how it behaves. So I have seen uh, this bird with a lot of effort. And so I, I know now how to how hard it is to see this bird and uh, sometimes um, the people uh, like in, in december time and all in some uh, it's it's very good sighting happening um, especially in uh, near lay area and all but if you have to go look for this in uh, june through september uh, nubra area especially panamic region is the very uh, is very very good for this bird um, sometimes they are cooperative, sometimes it is not. So it depends upon our luck. So uh, that day when I made this picture, it was just gave me a few seconds. The only one shot which got sharpened, I mean, which I made uh, that day was this. So um, 
a very very like frail kind of bird and a lot of shades of lilac and purple and i love this bird um also this bird another subspecies is found in the eastern himachal himachal uh, him, eastern arunachal especially in tawang uh, that also is very beautiful uh, so i got to see them finally but uh, it's not very easy to see sometimes it is easy sometimes it is tough but yeah generally i would categorize it as a tough bird and also tough to photograph so that one and now uh, let's go to northeast area so uh, many of you might be familiar with very uh, many birding locations in the northeast uh, mishmi hills uh, eagle nest then um, sela pass tawang mandala namdafa walong all these are amazing birding spots and many more are coming because there are many uh, good birders out there now birding guides so they are finding new new locations uh, so these are like you know added advantages now so uh, but most of the areas which i have birded and uh, was very satisfied are these areas in arunachal pradesh um, satisfactory birding sometimes not so satisfactory photographs but if you enjoy your birding and your time i think that is the arunachal pradesh is the best uh, i would always uh, suggest and then other uh, northeastern states like mizoram uh, very amazing wildlife very less birded areas like moorland national park dampa tiger reserve then fong phi uh, national park or the blue mountain national park these are all like very unexplored areas and they, you don't know what you get there there are several subspecies um, several other birds for example i had seen like um, emerald cuckoo there in fong phi uh, very good uh, numbers then i have seen rufescent prinia rufescent prinia is very very difficult uh, uh, to make um, i mean difficult to uh, be seen in different in in other parts of the country but i found blue mountain national park is, is a very good location so it's like there were rufous fronted tiger prinias everywhere that could be the time as well but you know um, it's a even even if you are at the right time certain times it's very difficult to see these birds so rufous and prinia was very good out there um, that manipur uh, tree creeper was very good uh, then um, then uh, what was that the spot breasted scimitar babblers uh, what not like brown uh, capped laughing thrushes uh, all these birds were like you know they like they were uh, since that area is like you know hunted uh, the birds were not very friendly but uh, these are very uh, good areas to explore and make very good uh, certain times uh, very good pictures um another uh, sorry another uh, area uh, to see uh, good uh, birds very different endemic birds are like konoma area in nagaland and also pungro um very good for yellow throated laughing thrushes um then mustached laughing thrushes or ashy laughing thrushes um all these things are very very um, um easily easily seen i would say but seen means uh, it's not photograph it's very difficult to make photographs white browed laughing thrushes these are like you give uh, you get uh, like you know uh, you get really really on like uh, you don't know what to do you just see them but you are not able to uh, click images um and also like um, one another important bird which i found from uh, pungro area in nagaland uh, we found from pungro area was the great spotted woodpecker and that is i think one of the first records and also one of one and only photographic record from india so these areas we don't know what what we see um, and another uh, good bird in that area is slender billed orion uh, so it's very hard to see that bird so but we could could see a breeding uh, pair out there in in that area then another famous place in the the land is the doyang reservoir where we get uh, or the pangti valley where we get lads and lads of amur falcons uh, uh, coming uh, out there in the migration time so that is one beautiful area to see uh, them in in flocks uh, in many many good numbers um, then another uh, place to bird uh, in in northeast is the north west east sikkim areas north like lachin lachun west like kyuzing ravangla 
um, I think in one of my first birding trips uh, to Himalayan region, uh, my first and one of the first Northeast birding trip was to Revangla and the QZ. And we enjoyed a lot and every new bird, every bird which we saw was new and like multiple hunting flocks. And it's like birding on hormones, literally we called it after that. It, you, you don't know what to shoot because it's like hunting flocks, very small birds moving very, very fast at jet speed. So that first experience always stays in your heart. So uh, West Sikkim was one of the first areas which had done birding many years back. So um, that area is very, very good. Um, then East Sikkim uh, uh, for very specific birds like great parrot bill, uh, then very good uh, for pheasants um, like uh, monal, of course, and also blood pheasants. Um, uh, these are all very good uh, in uh, East Sikkim um, area. Then coming to Assam, there are like a lot of places in Assam, but uh, very less explored. Uh, the Hing Patkai is like um, sort of mini Namdafa. Most of the birds which we see in Namdafa National Park, we get to see in the Hing Patkai also, uh, like the Soraipung as well as the Jaipur forest area, they together forms the Dihing Hing Patkai. Um, then uh, Kaziranga. Uh, National Park is another great, great place to bird, apart from uh, all the mammals, uh, hog deer, as well as tiger sightings. Um, we, uh, it's a very good place to, uh, uh, very good grassland to bird. Uh, and also Manas National Park, another great grassland and forest to bird. Um, so it, uh, in Dihing Patkai is another uh, very important sightings which you could, we could get uh, is about the folktales. So black black backed folktale and white crowned folktales uh, like Namdafa. Uh, Dihing Patkai also has very good numbers, but in Dihing Patkai it's very easy to make uh, pictures. I mean, sort of easy to make pictures of these two species of folktales, which we uh, otherwise find very very difficult. Then another area um, uh, is like in West Bengal in Singalina National Park and also Lava Neura Valley in West Bengal. These are also very, very good for uh, very good birds um, like uh, finches and also uh, like what is that? Um, Tago pans. Uh, and also crossbills, all these birds are very difficult elsewhere uh, for a reliable location, but um, these locations are very, very good for uh, this, this location in West Bengal is very good to make uh, images, best images of those species. Um, so moving to Mishmi Hills, I'll show some pictures. Uh, so this is Blight's Thragopan, one of the other standard Thragopans which we have in India. Uh, so we have, uh, I think, two, three subspecies. Um, so this is the eagle nest, uh, and this is the Mishmi one. Um, so we have another subspecies in the eagle nest, and also probably uh, another one in Nagaland, in Konoma, and another one in Manipur. So I might be wrong a little bit, but these are different areas uh, or possible subspecies which we can see. So I almost saw uh, saw the uh, Manipur one in the uh, in in the Shirui uh, National Park, Shirui Hills, uh, but I couldn't get a good picture. I mean, uh, get a picture. So uh, that was also a very difficult uh, trek. Um, so maybe one of the best possible locations where we can kind of pick this bird or see this bird is Mishmi. Um, we get sometimes if we are fortunate, we get to see them on the road. Eagle Nest is also another place, but Mishmi probably is better. Then um, uh, another one uh, which we see, uh, a very good wren babbler, which we see in Mishmi, is the barwing wren uh, babbler. Uh, unlike other wren wobblers, these are a bit more friendly. So when they come to an open area, they sort of give us a good image. We can. Uh, we can make decent images. That's what my experience is. But uh, compared to all other end babblers, I found this one as the best to make picture. And Mishmi is a very good location. And uh, other one which we can see is um, barbings and straight throated barbing. Barbing also is very good in Mishmi to get very good pictures. Then golden babbler. Um, I really like these pictures of that ambience. We get to see some of the habitat in this uh, image because most of the images which I have generally is like 
sort of portrait. So uh, I once a while when we see uh, these kind of habitat shots, it's like you get a sense of the space as well as the habitat. Then um, other rewarding bird uh, in uh, Mishmi uh, sometime is what's thrown on. Uh, so certain time it is easy to see. Uh, for example, the day when we shot this bird, uh, Rafiq was there uh, with me. Uh, so we uh, we got to see the bird about an hour. Uh, it was like not going. And it was so comfortable. But that was the only occasion I saw the bird co cooperating that much. Uh, so, so that day we had seen like in two, three birds in different locations. Uh, sometimes people had seen um, like a flock of them, seven, eight birds in eagle nest. But I was not fortunate to see that many uh, a number. But uh, but uh, this image, like you know, stays with me for a lifetime because the kind of time it gave, and it gave all sorts of purchase, all angle a possible throwbone could give. So I was like very happy to um, see that bird. And the Mishmi is one of the best locations to make a good photograph if you see this bird because you get to see them in like below eye level or at eye level. Uh, then uh, bar-throated minla is another small bird, but it's a very beautiful bird. And uh, so you get to see them as a mixed hunting flock uh, in uh, this Mishmi region also. Uh, then uh, another bird which we can like, you know, make good images and like appealing images are like black spotted yellow tit. Um, then Manipur Pulveta, uh, very difficult to see this bird elsewhere, but Mishmi is the best place and is one of the sought after birds in uh, Mishmi. Manipur Pulveta is not so commonly seen elsewhere. Um, long billed Ren Babblers is another, uh, along with the bar winged, long, long billed Ren Babbler is also sometimes very easy to make image, but sometimes they don't give a chance but uh, if they come at it it will perch for a long time and it will be just there you know uh, so it's it's a very good bird uh, satisfactory uh ren babbler i would say to make an image of um hoxon's frog mouth uh, this is one of the uh, just excuse me one second so we have um two frog mouths uh, in our country so we have down south the ceylon frog mouth and also in sri lanka and this, this is one uh, this one which we see in the we see in the northeastern regions um this uh, this image is from mishmi uh, but uh, there are very good uh, numbers of this bird in mizoram as well as in Manipur. So I've seen a lot of them uh, at different places, uh, locations, but that first uh, time when we see it, it's always important. So that first time for me was Namdapa National Park. You get so many birds there and I think uh, the image of the male bird which we could make, I think was one of the first images uh, in of the male in the country. So that sighting I will, I will never forget. So later on, uh, we get very good sighting uh, of, we got very good sighting uh, in Mishmi. Um, of this frog mouth. Then uh, moving to Eagle Nest, um, another great location uh, and one and only location, I think, as of now, uh, uh, for the Bugat Leosicla, very important bird. It's one of the recently discovered bird. Um, and uh, there are, I think, there are certain other regions to see it also. But um, Eagle Nest is one of the reliable places to see. Um, it maybe photograph is not so easy. You can see this photograph. It's not a very, uh, you know, kind of clear. Like all parts of the bird visible. I have think. I think I have some some others uh, more. But this is one of the best. Uh, I mean, one of the uh, pictures that I like because it was seen towards the fag end of the day and it, very unexpected. And uh, it, there were two birds and they, they were just so close and it, I had 500 mm in hand and it was so close and it was not moving from that spot. Usually Bugut Leosa class, they move very, very fast. People who are familiar with the bird would come to know, uh, would know how difficult it is to shoot the bird. But that day it really perched there. And a uh, and, and whole day or a couple of days, we ran up behind this bird for a long time. But then when it gave a sighting, it really gave a very, very good sighting. So Rafiq was there and uh, you know, we enjoyed this bird for like you know, a long time in the same place. 
um, it was not moving and I, I didn't also want to move because if I had moved, moved a little bit towards the left, I would have gotten probably a very good shot of the, a clear shot of the bird, but I didn't want to move because I was scared that the bird would go. So this is one of the very uh, beautiful birds and very important sought after bird uh, from all over the world, uh, birders uh, in Eagle Nest. Then uh, other another uh, stragopan which I was mentioning is the Temming stragopan. Uh, this also is uh, probably one of the best sightings possible is uh, the eagle nest um, uh, area, eagle nest pass area. So when I shot this bird, it was like in December. It was not very easy, but uh, you know, finally we got to see the bird and so happy for. Uh, this uh, you know sighting later we got to see um, in mandala in arunachal as well but i think probably eagle nest is one of the best areas uh, to uh, uh, trek and uh, see even mishmi is also good but uh, mishmi you have to really really trek very high up so there are like uh, very high um, um, uh, areas like uh, uh, festooned uh, i mean with uh, basically rhododendron uh, um, pla uh, plants. So that is one uh, beautiful area for Temming Stragopan. But uh, uh, I have seen, I mean, we had uh, we had actually trekked to that area, very good uh, area to make images, but we could not make images from there. But uh, uh, this uh, uh, eagle's nest was. Uh, good place though it is not very clear the first sighting when you see it so i was very very happy to see it then um other uh birding area like sela pass uh, snow partridge is very very good out there um another important area uh, for snow snow partridge uh, is uh, the previously mentioned munciari area but sela pass is also very good if you see them you see them up close and you know all sorts of background you can get so last time when, I, when we saw it, uh, it was in April and it was snowing and it was like really beautiful to make some amazing images. This particular, uh, particular image, uh, image was in December. Um, this is a foggy image, but I really like this image. That is what I want, why I wanted to show. So Sela Pass is pretty good uh, place for blood pheasant. People look for blood pheasant in Sela Pass. Uh, other areas uh, in north, in East Sikkim and North Sikkim, there are good places, but Sela Pass is one of the uh, areas where we can um, uh, try to get in them in good numbers. North Sikkim is also good. Uh, but last time when we tried to look for this bird, uh, we saw it, but we um, could not make amazing images. Sometimes they get uh, people get like amazing images in the snow, uh, but we saw them, but uh, not like you know very good images. So this one is one of my favorite. This was also in deep fog, uh, just like, like very foggy that day, but uh, that image was made there. Then golden bush robin, uh, I think they breed uh, there in the Sela Pass. So we were looking for basically gold short pin, another important short pin. Many of you might know about that bird. So when we were looking for the short short pin, we saw this uh, bird. It was like kind of uh, dancing on a boulder, and the plumage was like very beautiful, beautifully colored, very intense color, intense yellow, and we got to make very good pictures that day. And then uh, another uh, good uh, birds which we see are like uh, white browed rose finches. Uh, so that time, uh, this was in March, and it was just snowing, and we got we can make like you know uh, very good images on the snow background. Uh, then a ruddy shelter, it's a, it's a sort of a very common bird. Like if you go to um, many water bodies in the northeast and also uh, in Ladakh, Ladakh they breed. You get to see them, but to see them in like snow is very, very rare. So that day it was like a, a snow blizzard, uh, just like snow everywhere. And even we, we had very tough time to travel by the car. But you know, when the snow a bit cleared up and when we kind of uh, reached a water body, it was like almost frozen. A very tiny pool of water was there. But then these birds were around and also ferruginous pochard, then bar headed geese. These three uh, birds, uh, species of birds were there. And that was the image I made then. And it's one of the favorite images of mine. Um, then Tawang area is very, very good for birding. Um, there are very uh, good records of, I think, probably uh, uh, 
only records of the crested tit wobbler. I showed you the white browed tit wobbler. So crested tit wobbler is even more beautiful. So we were looking for the bird, but then we could not see it. So sometime ho hopefully we will see it. Um, but then um, that area, Tawang and the adjacent area is very, very good for uh, birding, um, especially for these wobblers. Gold crest is another great bird to see. And also some rose finches were uh, could be seen uh, and like you know three banded rose finch i think there was a record and also the tick wobbler was a record um, i mean so there are there are very good birding opportunities there uh, very less less explored um, areas and also also white tailed bonal people had seen there so these are like uh, very good birds out in those areas uh, then mandala is other another good area in birding uh, for birding you you get very beautiful unique perches see the slaty blue, blue fly catcher it's like the it is the blue pine cone uh, cones out there and like you know, plants and uh, these this bird was perched atop one of that so i felt that the perch is very very unique so mandala is very very beautiful for, for such perches like uh, very mossy like you know very dreamy kind of perches so mandala is uh, and also the birding is like eye level or below eye level. So you get to see a lot of them and uh, can make very good images. And in very um, in migration time, uh, there are like, you know, fields there where you can get a lot of different variety of thrushes. So we got to see a lot of thrushes, red throated, no man's in the grade. And also like, um, uh, uh, I think... Uh, Tibetan siskins, all these kind of birds we got to see last time. Uh, and also brown bush wobbler is one of the best area to see it. And also I had mentioned earlier about the white bellied red star. Mandala is another place to go to. Uh, then another bird which is very important is, uh, I forgot, what was that? Ha, buff breasted. Uh, buff throated wobbler. That is one of the recent findings that there's a breeding location there and so uh, you can get to see a lot of them. I mean, not a lot of them, at least you get to see a pair of them sometime uh, in that area. So uh, Mandala is very rewarding in terms of images. So uh, it's like um, beautiful purchase and beautiful background. And also um, another important sighting which we had in Mandala was the red panda. So it was a very unexpected sighting. Um, though I had seen uh, red panda in the Singarila National Park, this one was very important sighting. Um, it was like feeding nicely on a tree and uh, the yellow-billed uh, blue magpies, they were um, chasing the, trying to uh, chase the, uh, the, the, the panda. So it was like a very good uh, kind of feel. I have some images which I'm to process, but that was a very, very good sighting out there. Um, so that is one important um, area for several birds, um, several unique birds. Um, Temmings Thragopan is also very, very good. Um, I think, you know, this mandala one came in between. Anyway, uh, beautiful rose finch is also very good in Tawang area in Arunachal Pradesh. Um, so I think I just got jumped up. So anyway, it's a beautiful rose finch. Otherwise, it's not so easy. So uh, you get to see uh, in very good numbers. At least I saw it in April in very good numbers in, in Tawang, March and April rather. Um, and I, as I mentioned, Namdafa is one of the best birding locations um, in, in, in our country. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful national park. You still, there are, I've heard that a lot of unexplored uh, places. It's a range of elevations starting from like, um, you know, like kind of 200 meter to like 3,000, 3, 4,000 meters. So uh, it's a lot of birds which we can see in the forest and also amazing variety of mammals, smaller mammals, as well as cat species, and owls. There was a recent record of the buffy fish owl, and also like uh, Ceylon bay owl, not Ceylon, not, not Ceylon, oriental bay owl. All these birds are like, you know, there are many uh, uh, very good birds. And it, the, the area is not very good for making pictures because it's a very thick forest. So it's a canopy. So it's very difficult to make images, but they're very good location. Then Blight's Kingfisher is another, um, it's this is not a great photo, but it's a very dear photo for me uh, because uh, the sheer effort which I have put in to see this uh, bird. It was not easy that time. I think it's one of the first few photographs of this bird uh, in, in uh, that time. 
So recently, uh, Dihing Patkai uh, was very sensational for this bird. Um, so it's not an easy bird, uh, but um, Namdafa is one of the good locations to see it. Then uh, Walong is another uh, famous bird for Walong is the Yunnan nuthatch. So you don't get to see this nuthatch in, in any other area, only in that uh, Anjohar district is what uh, people have loca located this bird and recorded this bird. Um, the last time we got to see an, a, like a uh, wall creeper. I like this picture because it was like a kind of a butterfly kind of picture, but um, Walong is also a good area for wall creeper. We saw a lot of them. Um, we get to see wall creeper in the eagle nest and also uh, in Ladakh also I, see, I saw last time in September and also in uh, Uttarakhand, I mean, Corbett area is also very good for this bird. Um, then spot breasted parrot bill is one of the best locations to see this bird is uh, in Malaw, um, to photograph as well. Then moving to Mizoram, uh, Mizoram, this one is Chin, Chin Hills uh, Ren Babbler. I think it's one of the best areas to see and photograph. This bird is the Monal National Park in Mizoram. Uh, so it, it was, I felt it was fairly common out there and uh, it is shy most of the time, but that day probably it just kind of tried to perch for me or whatever. I made a reasonably good image that day. Then um, gray peacock pheasant, I love this picture. And to make this image, uh, uh, you know, it, it took a lot of time. Uh, it's It's a bird which we usually hear it's mostly, it's often heard than seen. Uh, so it's not very difficult to hear it. You you get to hear it in Kaziranga, uh, I mean, the Panbari National Forest in that area, I mean, Panbari Forest area. Uh, then we get to hear them a lot in Namdafa. Then um, Dehing Patkai is another area. Eagle Nest is another area. You, you hear them most of the time, like if you are into serious birding and if you get to go early in the morning, then you get to see hear them. But to make an image, it's very, very difficult. They're very shy, super shy bird, very alert bird. Uh, so I have made this, almost made the image twice and then still I missed. So finally, uh, you know, by chance and just as a like, you know, kind of a um, very, uh, you know, kind of very blessed sighting just appeared in Damba in uh, Mizoram. So this is one image which I made from then there. Mm. Green Kochoa is seen in another other parts of uh, um, um, in Northeast also. Like eagle nest is very good. Last time we got to see a nesting uh, pair as well, uh, but uh, not probably very very easy to make uh, pictures. Namdafa is another area. So this picture, uh, also Mishmi is also very, very good for both the Kochuas, purple Kochua as well as uh, green Kochua. But this particular image was made from Mizoram. Then Nagaland. Nagaland, this is the uh, Mrs. Hume's pheasant. It's not a very good image, but this is also a very, very hard earned image of mine. So in that, that I had to really do a lot of night treks to get this image. Uh, but worth it and I think one of the first photographs and probably the only photograph of a male bird in the wild from India. Uh, the Naga and Babbler is another endemic which we find in Nagaland. Uh, so this also is not very easy but sometimes you get to see it in open uh, but still it's a hard bird uh, sometimes to click. Uh, then Amur Falcon, as I told you, so you see um, like thousands and thousands of them uh, in the Doyang Reservoir in Nagaland. So um, that time, that day I made this image, um, like after climbing a small uh, hillock out there. And uh, that was the decent uh, time. I mean, that was the time when I made some decent images of it. But then when I came back uh, to Bangalore and then we, we heard about this multiple sightings of it from Malambura and people were making amazing images. So it was like, uh, you know, uh, okay, we saw. But whatever it is, I would say that you know the thrill of seeing that many numbers in Nagaland is a worthwhile uh, you know sight. So, uh, but um, Malambura sighting was also very very good. But it's 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 different to see them in in there. Um, Manas is very good for very many birds, like and also tiger. So I was very fortunate to see my first northeast tiger in Manas, and I was like very very. Uh, I mean, least expert, and I was like completely uh, taken aback and least expected sighting. 
it was raining and it is got of raining and then the tiger just appeared in the road so that was wonderful sighting it's very good for um other mammals as well as like black panther also sightings was were going on that time then clouded leopard and the grassland birds and another very important bird or um which you could basically see uh, almost harness Uh, is the silver breasted turtle uh, there are several other places to see namdapa is a good place but this very good too um uh, kasaranga is also very good and kasaranga joint tea gardens are very good uh, so that is one of the best uh, sort of the pitas uh, in that area as well. so this one was made from there the white cloud cute uh, piculet then um not skin very very good uh, for grandala brilliant blue color i have not exposed this shot properly but you know this i wanted to show it as a pair how strikingly uh, different they are the male and the female so the male is the blue one and the the drab one is the female but i wanted to show this as a frame that is how i put this picture so to expose grandala as a very good image you need to have a very kind of like dim light then only you can expose that bird very well but we had a very wonderful sightings last time in last uh, in this early this year actually that was one of my last birding before the lockdown so many thanks to aditya for this sighting uh, it was shot from lachum and we got lots lots of them flocks of them then rufus fronted it uh, it's very difficult to make this in uh, this uh, to see and uh, make good images of this tit elsewhere but not sikkim is very good uh then pygmy ring babbler you know fortunately this is commonly seen in the northeast but uh, uh, i could make this image from the west sikkim then this was from chewang's backyard uh, a very good naturalist his from his house uh, i felt, i really like the angle so i wanted to show it then hile uh, rhododendron uh, sanctuary and the adjoining areas are very good for birding so this is um, uh, mrs gold sunbird uh, it was like uh, you know kind of green or i don't know what but uh, just foggy but then uh, made uh, a good image another good um, bird very good bird to see in hile is the fulvus paracel so you get to see a lot of them there um, uh, other than many um, many other locations elsewhere uh, that black throated paracel also is a different sub species out there that also you get to see um, uh, see a, a, in good numbers in there uh then moving to west the bengal um, very many um, different kind of species are seen like water invaders uh then water birds uh, forest birds west bengal is like amazing like different different area famous for different different uh, birds so red crossbill is like sort of a migrant like you know it's like an erratic bird you don't know where you see them so for me to make a very good image of this crossbill i had to really struggle so singalila national park is one of the best locations reliable locations to make a good image of of the species so this is a female bird another good lo location which i uh, he uh, heard from some of my friends uh, in siliguri and uh, lava area is uh, is the nora valley lava area too so people there are places where you can get good images but singalila uh, i think the right point of time like march april it's one of the best time uh, to see them uh, also sitting on the pine uh, pine trees so this is a female bird and uh, this is another area in west bengal where we can get it that's chatakpur um that also um, is a very good area and i got to see a lot of them that day then uh, apart from very uh, good birds you get surprised by sort of sightings like mammals very um, good mammals like slow norris uh, this was from norland but very beautiful sighting we were looking for owls and then we got to see it then another very important toy mammal which we see uh, which we are able to see in singalila uh, the pride of singalila maybe probably it's a red panda uh shantanu prasad is one of the best go to person for this um and also sir 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 other people in, in that area so to see this mammal um uh, i think that is the best place to go put a little effort and you can make very good pictures uh so this is one sighting there and then moving to andaman and nicobar islands one of my favorite favorite areas uh, to bird so we have in south andaman several areas mount harriet 
Chidya Tapu, Shoal Bay, then also Choldari, Siddhi Ghat, all these were traders, um, and also forest birds, then Rangat, Diglipur, uh, some other birds. These are very less, less explored areas. So people, um, I think there are some researchers which uh, were conducting studies out there, but uh, several um, you know um, areas are yet to be explored because there are several reserved area for like you know um, other uh, like Jir Jirawas and other tribes. So it's very um, very um, you know kind of uh, very important that uh, we bird very with utmost discretion out there. So we need to get proper permission and all that um, in in these group of islands. Uh, little Andaman also is very, very good for birding and is still unexplored, but very good for Andaman barn owl and also several other, all, other, all the other owls. Um, so that is very good. Then Kamota, Kachal, um, all this Nankori group of islands, you don't know what still uh, is possible there. there are several, several good species of birds out there. And like I was like completely uh, surprised at the sighting and completely uh, different kind of feeling you know in Kamota and all you have the sea one side you have grassland you have forest uh, it's a different kind of habitat and very peaceful place very less crowded uh, so all these areas require permission but then you know it's not uh, it's not uh, impossible to get permission so you can with proper uh, through proper channel with the DC and forest uh, department permission, we can go to those places, um, at least for Indians. Um, then Campbell Bay, Great Nicobar is another area. Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve is like amazing. It's forest all over the place, lot of species. You don't know what you get there. Galatia National Park is another beautiful area to build, especially for Nicobar megabolds. Um, so this is like taken from Kachal, but it's the state bird of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So it's the Andaman wood pigeon. The Nicobar subspecies is a little bit more different. You can see the head is a bit more whitish, but this was a very, very close sighting. Usually it is very difficult to get uh, these uh, wood pigeons in a very good perch in a lower level. So that day we were uh, actually blessed with uh, this image. So I wanted to show that. And, uh, and the mantil is another important species when we go to Andaman. So sometimes you uh, get to see them close. Sometimes, most of the time, it is far. But then, uh, sometimes you can make uh, if you really wait there and you know try to uh, uh, you know, make uh, like be silent. Then we can go get good images. So these were fly. This the flock was flying and um, tried to uh, get some flight shot. And this was one image, such image. The long-tailed parakeet uh, is another beautiful parakeet which we get to see only in those group in India in Indian villages uh, in the in those islands. Uh, so the Andaman group um, is different uh, is a little bit smaller and lesser less uh, red in color uh, in the cheek area than the Nicobar uh, subspecies. Uh, so I have well, some... uh, sorry to cut off uh, the presentation has gone. Uh, could you please do it again? Sorry. Okay, one second. Sorry. No problem. I mean, it's okay. I mean, there's so many people. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, so I'll try to share it again. Can you see it now? Yes, it's loading. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so long tailed parakeet is another uh, subspecies. Uh, I mean, we have two subspecies in those two groups. So, and Nicobar parakeet is another one which we have to look for in the Nicobar group of islands. Uh, so, those are also very beautiful parakeets. Um, they, you, you do not get these island species elsewhere. Uh, then, collared king, kingfisher is subspecies, very beautiful um, kind of um, uh, plumage and adult, oh, I mean, uh, brilliant specimen here. Um, then Andaman Creek is another point sought after uh, endemic bird in Andamans. Uh, so this is also like um, not very easy sometimes, but you see sense them a lot. You, you see them crossing the road, you see them here and there, you hear them, but it's not very easy to make a picture of. Uh, then Andaman Cuckoo Dog, this, this is from uh, Kamota. So the Dikobar subspecies is a little bit more reddish compared to the Andaman subspecies, but uh, it, it's it's good to see them. Uh, and it is not so easy sometimes. And sometimes, you know, you are blessed with good pictures. Um, Andaman bull, bull, bull uh, if you get feeding tree, feeding uh, fruiting trees, then you get to see them feeding on the fruiting trees. But that also a very unique bull, bull with a small bite, uh, like, uh, yellow patch on the tail and all that. So it's very nice to see them. 
Then another endemic owl species like Andaman scopes are very uh, good owl species to see. So we were very fortunate to see it in the day also. Um, so yeah, one of my favorite pictures. Then Andaman hawk owl, another endemic species from there. Um, then a uh, Walden scope soul, another endemic species. Earlier it was supposed to be um, uh, one of the subspecies of the Oriental scope soul, but now it is defined as a Walden scope soul and new species. So this is also an endemic. Fortunately, I got to see them in the day too, thanks to Danish. Um, then uh, Andaman Nightjar, another important uh, uh, endemic of the Andaman groups. So I've not seen any other Nightjar in Andamans, especially, but in Kamorta and Kachal. Kamorta, I've seen gray Niger. Probably it was a migrating kind of uh, migration kind of species, but whatever it is, I'd seen them. But in Andamans, I never got to see any other Niger than the Andaman Niger. Then Besra is a, also a different subspecies in Andamans. So this was like in Drizzling, the time I made this picture. Then Beach Thikni, one of the best places in our Indian limits to see uh, is the Andaman group of islands. Um, so first time we got to see it in like one of the closest island towards South Andaman. And that was after a lot of uh, uh, kind of uh, hard work. Uh, but uh, uh, like uh, in, in, there are different areas now people are to explore. There are very good birders out there now. A very good researcher, go, uh, researcher Gogul Krishna, then good birder like um, Shakti, uh, all these people, Shakti Vel. Uh, so all these uh, new birders, uh, they have found very good locations. I recently saw, I think Shakti is one very good picture of the beach thickly. So there are different locations coming up now. Uh, but this one was specific, uh, was uh, particularly made from Diglipur. Um, so uh, when you get to uh, see this bird, uh, it's easy to approach them if we approach them cautiously, but otherwise they will take off. Uh, so if you are slow and uh, very steady to approach it, then uh, we can make very good pictures of the beach thickening. Then uh, white-breasted wood swallow, this is like, um, uh, it's the Southeast Asian uh, species, but in India, uh, in Indian limits, we get to see only in the Andaman and the Nicobar Islands. So that day it was drizzling. It was one of the, I think one of my first trips, uh, only we got this in from Havelock. So they were like in a flock of them trying to feed uh, on the grub. Uh, then Andaman tree pie, another very important endemic bird. Sometimes you get to see them, but you know, to make a good picture, probably it is like a it's a lot of weight. So this time it had come down on a lower branch and I was glad to make this image. Then uh, Great Nicobar Archipelago is one of the, I think I was one of the first few border, birders to explore out there. So that time when I made this image, we had no information about the Nicobar scopes all at all. So um, we were just doing our some, you know, we were we gen generally used to do uh, night birding. So one of that uh, birding uh, session, we got this uh, owl and very, really, very, very thrilled to see this bird on our own without any information. So I think it's one of the first images um, uh, from there. And I think Birding Asia published this as one of the uh, first images they have. Um, then, yeah, the crimson sunbird we, we see in uh, that area is also different. They, they do not have the streamers as we see in our Indian, uh, in the mainland. Uh, and also very orangish throat and violetish crown, all that. So all this, uh, much of the birds uh, we see in the mainland, even if we see them in the Nicobar uh, group, Andaman group, they're slightly different. Even the blue-eared kingfisher is different. The white eyes are different. The sunbirds are different. Almost all of them have that kind of island kind of changes uh, induced into them. And so it's, it's very important that we make pictures of each and every species which we see. Uh, the Nicobar megapod is one of the unique uh, species, unique bird also. Uh, they are known for making mound nests and uh, of uh, with uh, uh, rotting vegetation and loose soil. So you, they use their like you know that feet uh, to gather the soil uh, to make the mound nests. And so one of the mound nests which I have uh, seen uh, is like you know about. Uh, was about about eight feet in height so it was like uh, very uh, sometimes they reuse and it, it it can really become big um so they these species um face a, a kind of a threat from monitor lizards uh, who raids uh, regularly their uh, mound nests for for eggs so um this is a very unique species um 
which we get to see in those group of islands. So this is a go-to bird and Galatia National Park is one of the best areas to see them. Um, then Nicobar jungle flycatcher, another very important kind of night, night uh, flycatcher for us, uh, for, in, for birders. Uh, so this like, you know, stout kind of uh, flycatcher with a hooked bill. This looks like an Asian brown or the you know, brown breast flycatcher, but you know, it's di different in the, in the posture. It's a stouter bird. When we come to see it, you come to really know about it. And the bill, everything is a bit different. Uh, the brown flycatchers, they have pinkish kind of bill, and this is like hooped, darkish kind of bill. Um, then another important bird which we can see is the Nicobar bulbul in the central uh, in Nankori group is very, very uh, good for these bulbuls. Um, though we get to see them, it's very difficult to make a good picture. And they, they seem to be very shy for me, I don't know. So this is one of the images which I could really get close. Um, so it's a very uh, kind of olive kind of bulldog, but uh, it's a very important bird for us to see. Uh, the Nicobar sparrowhawk, it's one of the best um, you know, birds out there and very difficult to see. I think it's one of the first few images of this bird. I have not seen an adult bird picture anywhere else. Uh, I've seen some researchers uh, images of the juvenile birds. So fortunately, we were very happy to see, I mean, we were lucky to see this. And uh, that also, like, you know, towards the flag end of the day, also, it was not very clear, but, you know, the, the, the bird is very important. Um, also, very glad to see this image. Another sparrowhawk, which, I mean, we can see reasonably common uh, in Nicobar is the Chinese sparrowhawk. So I've seen them in very good numbers out there. Then one of the different uh, species of um, you know, it's a it's supposed to be a Nicobar subspecies of the Oriental scop owl, but the call is very different. Appearance is totally different. So um, I mean, appearance also, and the call is also very very different from the normal from the Oriental scop owl which we have in the mainland. Uh, so this is also a very good owl to see. Um, so probably more studies are needed to to uh, know about this species. Then, yeah, the, this was a windfall species like a little and mandarin duck, a male bird had come and it was there for almost one and for about one and a half months there. So I was fortunate to go there uh, in well in time to, uh, to get an image. I really, really like this bird. It's a beautiful bird. Um, so that is it. And then towards uh, Western Guards, you know, many of the species, many of us are familiar with Western Guards uh, birding areas. So, um, this image I really like, so I wanted to show it. So Malabar Whitehead, it's a starling, it's an endemic. So this was made from the famous timber uh, depot area in Dandeli. So there was like a lot of fruiting fig trees. And uh, so uh, we could ma make this image uh, that day. And that fruiting tree was full of many other species like wind-tailed, uh, I mean, wet, uh, gray-headed, uh, green pigeon, then um, brown-capped pygmy woodpeckers, then ilmina, uh, then like uh, many other like nilgiri flower pecker thick built flower pecker it was like the tree was full of like different different species of birds brown barbet uh, then uh, crimson was the small barbet the malabar barbet whatever so all these birds were like you know, malabar gray hornbill so a great uh, oriental pied uh, malabar pied hornbill all these birds were great hornbills these are like very 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 um, good birds to see in dandeli uh, in a small place. So that is a very important birding area for uh, you know, people who want to see as many number of species and make very good many image, very good images in a short time. Uh, so this is the Malabar Grey Hornbill. Then you, we know that the black and orange flycatcher, one of the cutest endemics which we can see, one of the best areas to see uh, them at the Sims, National, uh, Sims Park in Uti. Uh, uh, area also and also uh, Munar. So this was made from Munar. So botanical garden in Uti is also very very good place to see black and orange flycatcher. Um, to see um, then the uh, very important owl for for the south. Uh, the Ceylon Bay Owl, um, sometimes it is easy to see and sometimes it's very very tough. So when you get to see the perch, day perch, they are there all the time. Many people can go 
and uh, really enjoy the sighting. But if you do not see it, then we do not see it. I know James Eaton, uh, uh, he had tried several times to finally uh, to, to see that, uh, to this, see this bird. I don't know whether he has seen it yet. I think he has, but yeah, he had made several attempts to see this bird uh, in his birding trips. So it's not very easy. And even for me also to get that first uh, sighting, it was not very easy. Um, then Jordan's Niger, another endemic uh, Niger for us. Sometimes it's CC, sometimes it's not. Um, then our Ceylon frog mouth. So that is also um, daytime. Most of the time we get to see them, but very rare to see them in the night. And that day we were looking for the spot bellied eagle owl. So when we came back uh, after that sighting, then we got to see them and a very lower perch, like very active. So all these nocturnals, when they see, uh, when we see them in the night, it's like a different dimension to them, you know, uh, rather than when we see them in the day. Daytime they are like you know kind of sleepy mode, but in the night they are very very active and uh, well, like you know, um, in very very uh, act, uh, kind of very alert kind of state. So you get to see them, you you get to enjoy a different uh, side of them in the night. Then Malay night heron was another beautiful bird, um, another el elusive bird which we could see last uh, May uh, with Sanu. So usually it is a very, very difficult bird to see and make a picture of. But that day when we saw it, it was like a good one hour sighting. And we really left the bird and came back. It was like trying to fish in the small puddle um, in the rock. And it was very, very, um, it was an adult bird and very enjoyable to see it fishing. and. Um, you know, take, giving us that time. It was alert, but it was not, it didn't see us because we were very, very quiet. So you have to be literally uh, uh, like dead, like to shoot an image uh, of this bird. But amazing um, bird to see. And then Black Basa, one of the best areas to see Black Basa um, is uh, in Tatekad. Even in Andaman, speak it. Shoal Bay is one of the best places, but um, we have more access to, like, you know, generally in, to South India than going to the island. And so in mainland, for, for mainland birders, it's a very good location. Also, Mahananda in West Bengal is very sought after for Black Basa and Jordan's Basa. Jordan's Basa is very difficult for us in the in Kerala, but Wayanad area is very good. But uh, um, certain nest, nesting location by Abhijit Manoj uh, and all was like very, um, I think, very famous location. Um, I, I never got to see it there, but we have Jordan's Basa. But Black Basa, one of the best locations to make good images, is Tate Garden in Kerala. And then Malabar Throbon, amazing sightings from Tate Garden we can get. And this is one of the uh, uh, like you know, one of my favorite pictures of the Trogon, uh, Malabar Trogon from the Tekard. So I wanted to show that, and that's it. So to conclude, we all we all know that we have a responsibility, and uh, it's very important that we use uh, we do birding with a degree discretion, whether we use call playback, whatever. Um, you know, and the nesting sites, uh, we, it is very advised to stay away from the nest so as to cause minimum disturbance to them. We anyway disturb them by, by our, like whether we are using binoculars or camera, we are anyway disturbing them. So, but try to make minimum disturbance uh, by whatever mode of uh, birding we are operating. We should be, we should be watchful of what we do. Um, and uh, whenever it's possible, we try to take the local help because because that will help them uh, to protect that environment which they live in. You know, when we go to certain locations, uh, if we are regularly birders are going, then what's an income for them? Add an income, or you know, a main income for them for many of the guides out there. So it's very important that we use their services. Try to eat from the local uh, eat, uh, shops. Try to buy something like you know, like some biscuits or some tea, something from them so that you know. Uh, for them also, it's a benefit, uh, and for us also, you feel happy. So it's very important that uh, you know we keep these kind of uh, things in our in small small things in our mind uh, to try to purchase locally. Like so, that there are certain areas where we can get very good stuff, honey, all that. Like you know, when we go to Mizoram, Manipur, Walong, all that area, they have like very local produce, very fresh produce. So we can buy them. And also we can get to the place where uh, we stay and then we can try to ask them to cook for us. So it's a it's a good thing, like, you know, when we, when we have this kind of um, uh, all-income-based birding. So it's, it's 
it it helps all of us like it helps us for them also it helps to protect the species because uh, they will try to protect uh, because more and more tourists come uh, to make more and more photos so photography is a very very powerful tool uh, to engage many people like all of us uh, when, when we hear about the bird we may not be uh, much enthused about it okay we might be curious but when you see a picture you have that wow factor that that factor only comes through images and you know that kind of um uh kind of uh, expression of the visual media and through the visual media so uh, so very important that we out we go out there but wherever we bird we bird with like you know utmost responsibility uh, all of us uh, very very important uh, we should not be in a mad uh, you know goose chase for uh, wild goose chase for getting something whatever we need of course we we need to have that in in our mind or in our uh, to give us the energy to uh, to go and see the new birds but uh, we wherever it is wherever we are whatever we are we need to exercise that kind of responsibility as a as a good uh, environmentalist or a naturalist uh, so that's all i have to say and about all this it's the passion for and the love for the birds you know it's like uh, the colors for me it's all the colors and then it, it becomes the behavior and you know it's a kind of uh, and there are so many other factors which comes later and you know the travel associated with it we go to several places so most of my uh, my travel is like with the with the perspective of birding so i try to go to less crowded places uh, more scenic places so we uh, we all like you know enjoy that process it's an enjoyment uh, we we actually do not know the benefit we may not realize it but uh, before like you know for us to go out there and then and you know uh, just enjoy that process is also very important uh, for us to follow a very healthy lifestyle um, so that's all i have to say and uh, thank you so much be so be impatient so i think i took a lot of time to cover this and i just wanted to social show pictures and some areas so that's why uh, and there are many many areas still more to cover many many birds um but yeah uh, it's like whatever minimum time we have and this is not a minimum time it's about uh, to us I'm thankful to uh, all the organizers um and uh, thankful uh, to all of you being there like you know who kind of stayed through this and that's all from me thank you so much uh, oh thank, thank you ma'am uh i drew okay cool so uh friends we are starting the q and Q and A session, so you can unmute and uh, ask the question or share your question. Uh, 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 okay, uh, Amir, like there were some questions in the chat box. You can just uh, ask. Uh, yes. Uh, cool. So I'll see that, uh, ma'am. By the time you can see the chat box, there are a lot of uh, like you know uh, happy feedbacks are there. You can see that. I'll see the questions. Yeah, I cannot see a specific questions or like you know rather than the you know feedback. So uh, anybody has anything like? Uh, so there was, uh, one question from uh, Harish Iyer about your rigs that you use for the photography tips. Uh, about the photographic tips. I mean uh, <laughs> rigs, rigs that you use. Um, uh, see, um, see, it's like. Uh, uh, it's about uh, the, the the camera, or like about I would say is like you know for the uh, uh, for the smaller birds like wren babblers. I I try to always um, kind of use smaller lenses because um, they are seen in the thickets, and so we need um, uh, the you know quick movement. So I try to uh, do a little bit research work before I try uh, going to a place. Especially in this, like after I did a lot of birding, now I have, uh, you know, kind of a lot of research. Uh, I do a lot of research for the species in my mind. So for the wren babblers, I prepare and they take a smaller lens. And for the big birds, uh, for example, if I go to Ran of Kutch area and the birds are in very good light and if 
they are far, um, then it's a good reach helps. So I uh, try to take bigger lenses. So I currently um, uh, have alternate between Canon 300mm and Canon 500mm. And most of the time uh, when I use 500, I use it with converters like 2x or 1.4x. Um, uh, so this is how what I do regard uh, in regard with the camera and for uh, other like you know behavior in the field um, I try to uh, kind of approach the bird very slowly and when whenever the bird is looking away from us then uh, I try to approach faster and cover take cover whenever possible um, that is how I I behave with the field so uh, that's about it. And anything specific, Harish, you know, which you want to know? Harish, you there? I think he left. So, yeah, I think we can, we can ask. Uh, wonderful uh, fascination, Ms. Jaini. Uh, I was very fascinated by the photos that you have been showing. So, when did you start uh, bird photography as your passion? As your passion. Uh, see, it was it's like uh, I started serious bird, bird photography from 2012. Uh, and uh, But birding from 27 and uh, 28. So 2008. Um, so it was like uh, from uh, like I also like if you uh, happen to see some of my initial bird pictures in the India Nature Watch, which I used to post. Uh, like it's like it's a lot of improvement. So uh, I also started improving from you know my own photographs. So it's like serious photography from 2012, and I'm still learning. So it's a it's a it's a continuous process. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful photos, okay. Beautiful photos. Thank you. Yeah. So, Jenny, I have one question. So, why you choose to, uh, like, you know, only bird photography or other, uh, no other wildlife must? So no, 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 no. It is not <laughs> the case. Uh, you, I have shown you, like, a red panda and also like a, a, a blue loris. It's not that hmm. I am interested in other wildlife. The problem for me is the limitation of carrying equipment. So um, for okay. me, uh, for all of us to carry like equipment in the flight and all, um, for the cabin baggage, we are allowed only seven kg. And that too, with a lot of like, you know, requests, sometimes we, we get, from, for, for example, my equipment is about 12 kg with the bag. So I have to really plead them that let me take this. So, you know, um, so that, that is one thing. And also the weight matters. So I cannot, I'm not, you know, equipped to carry so many equipments at a, a equipment at, a diff, at the same time. For example, mammals. Uh, if pe if the people who are like you know, kind of there are many mammal photographers here, so the lens is different. So for a five with a five hundred mm, I remember I shot a black. Uh, what is that? Uh, the Himalayan the, uh, the, uh, the black bear with a five hundred mm, and I had only the head in the picture. So it's very difficult uh, to carry all the equipment at the same time. That is the pro only issue. Otherwise, I live, like all the wildlife. I, okay. scale, makes, I am skill, uh, still skeptical, but uh, I am in a, I can take pictures of them, though I get spine chill. Okay. Very good. Hello. Hi, yes. Hello. Hi, yes. Hello. I can hear you. Uh, very good evening, ma'am. Uh, Thanks for such a fantastic presentation. Uh, my query is that when we click so many pictures of the birds, what is the best way to segregate them and use for the feature use? Because when you are clicking thousands of pictures, what is the best way to manage those pictures? Um, that's a very difficult question for me to answer, and I am not very good at it. I do not use Photoshop any of <laughs> or any of that thing. But uh, I use Light uh, Lightroom, and there is very good cataloging we can do there. But for me, uh, for me, it's a personal, very personal uh, thing. You know, I uh, any every picture you have seen is like I have spent a lot of time uh, with that because uh, for me it is it's it's like you know it's for me to enjoy than anyone else. So I sift, uh, sit, sit and sift through each and every image. That is not very recommendable when uh, we have thousands of pictures, but people have different ways to do it. For me, I go through every every image. Sometimes it is like, you know, same image, you have like thousand shots, but still, you know, um, 
because I why I end up taking so much of pictures is because first uh, first reason I I do not use tripod at all uh, unless and until I very few uh, cases where I have I say I sat in hides um, I do not use tripod it's not that I have anything against towards a high uh, tripod the problem is uh, carrying that also is an added weight for me so because uh, I do not use tripod I uh, click uh, like multiple continuous shoots so i end, end up making a lot of pictures as you said so but i painfully sit and uh, do it that's all i think m many people might have many other pro professional photographers might have a very good method of cataloging i, I am not that one to have to answer it thank you very much yeah so yeah so that make uh, one question so i also do that like i don't carry tripod and i click a lot of pictures and end up uh, storing all the pictures i don't know what to delete so so do you delete the pictures or keep all those uh, pictures in hard drive or somewhere uh, no when i yeah uh, when i say for example if i have a folder today uh, like suppose i go to some place say for example nandi hills i go there and uh, then i come back with a full card uh, and then uh, i if i am uh, sifting th through the pictures then i definitely delete uh, some of the repetitions and uh, uh, unfocused pictures shaky pictures i delete them so it's not that i have everything uh, stored uh, but i have so many hard drives like you know uh, so i think it's uh, some some point sometimes like for example like now since i have clicked most of the birds for me now habitat shots are also important so when i go back to my older pictures when i made with made with a smaller lens most becomes important so clear pictures i always keep but repetitive pictures and very shaky pictures i delete okay that's a good tip I think you are not audible, right? Couldn't you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, uh, madam. But like uh, Doctor Sitesh Patil was talking something, but I couldn't hear. But it was not audible. I oh, okay, okay. What I mean to say is that uh, I delete repetitive pictures and also like yeah, 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 pictures yeah. as. Yeah, that that we heard, that, madam. But so so just asking yeah. like uh, what Sitesh Patil was talking. Talking, so we couldn't hear that. Okay, okay, sure, sure. Okay, understand. Jenny, uh, uh, what are the uh, what are the foreign location that you uh, like like the most? Uh, best pap uh, I mean Papua, Papua, Papua New Guinea, and Papua. I would uh, say any day that is like the amazing exotic birding location I have ever done. So uh, it's like it's a different different world altogether, and I could not believe that they can really perform such my mating dances. Uh, so it is like one of the best locations I have ever birded. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any more questions? Ah, there was a question about. Uh, ah, good evening, ma'am. Ah, yeah, go ahead. Ah, good evening, ma'am. Uh, myself, uh, Smoon Raj. I, I'm just uh, studying MSc Geology in uh, Bharatiya University. I'm from Tamil Nadu. Ah, uh, your experience is very good, ma'am. Ah, uh, we like. Uh, I just before uh, starting three months for bird watching, ma'am. Ah, uh, your your session is very good, ma'am. I uh, like. Ah, uh, we live. Ah, uh, live your experience, ma'am. Ah, uh, what is your tips to the new new begin? Beginner birders, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, it's 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 a process of enjoyment, as I said. Uh, and uh, camera is not a must, but you know, the camera helps in uh, basically uh, kind of. Uh, for me, I started learning most of the names uh, through the camera shots. So when I when I'm in the field, I uh, when I started birding, I didn't know what even an ashi prinia was. Everything was every name was new to me. So that time, what I used to do is like um, I used to click pictures, and there were friends, like very, very good birding friends, and my uh, seniors were there with me. So um, you know, it was easy process for me to learn from them. But still, I used to click pictures and then come back uh, home and then ID with a field guide. So a, a book is very important for us to learn. Is to start with whichever book. Like for us, I think in India, uh, Grimmett is the most uh, cho chosen kind of book. 
so if we have a book and then you you go out there in the field and come back with whatever uh, species or some whatever earlier birders uh, are like you know they used to note everything right you know in their field book and then come back and id so it's it's a process which we should enjoy rather than a pressure so i think it's it's a gradual process for me it was very very gradual i didn't want to like it was not in my mind that i have to photograph or something like that it just happened it just happened as a evolved evolved passion that's all uh, really thank you ma'am uh, we just uh, leave your experience ma'am really thank you now uh, you are just a motivation ma'am thank you thank you so much and thank you big for being there yeah Uh, th thank you for thank you dr jaini for the very nice presentation and the wonderful collection of rare birds uh, what i would like to know from you is uh, uh, during these eight years long eight long years uh, how much time did you spend for taking these pictures on an average just for a curiosity uh, <laughs> that's a very tricky question so uh, if you ask my family like uh, you know my 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 parents i mean my mother or like my husband they will see say that you know she is not there in home uh, like almost like you know uh, 350 days uh, in a year she will just is not there in home that's what they would say uh, yeah but i spent a considerable amount of time um, and effort so, uh, so it's like a effort and a lot of like all photograph which we made i think is directly proportional to the time we spend in the field so if we get to spend uh, and that is a good thing otherwise we can always go for local birding also it's 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 not that you know you have to do like different locations uh, out of your like you know um, out of the area where we live in so we can be happy at any places for me i'm greedy i am like not happy with only the local birds so that is how i started Okay thank you thank you for the information yeah sure Uh, is there any more questions here in this? Uh, I'm just checking. Uh, any question? Up? Any uh, questions uh, apart from? Yeah. Hi, uh, yeah, uh, ma'am. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you actually uh, for your uh, nice explanation for my previous question. Uh, I actually was about to start my uh, reply just when I got my laptop disconnected because of low battery. Okay. I have just one question. This. Uh, mainly uh, i just want to know uh, because you have been uh, in the field for more than say 8 years or so uh, how do you compare yourself uh, from uh, in in the in the uh, you know uh, as to how much time uh, it takes for you to uh, make up an image uh, right now when uh, you compare yourself with the time when you started uh, bird photography how much time Uh, you uh, take to make up an image uh, uh, these days improvement right so yes say, you know my reflexes have become much better like when i was uh, like you know st when i started with my work on like you know the angle uh, and also like words are prob sometimes very quick moving very fast moving so then kind of reflect uh, the lag in the have improved a lot It's an it's a almost an experience also. So uh, you know the light conditions are other than looking at the camera itself. Uh, we can adjust, you know, the the, the uh, ISO settings as well as the shutter speed if you want, and also the aperture and uh, the kind of angle, the light. These these all things like comes natural to us after a long time. So that is that is one thing which we uh, basically get. as a, as an experience yeah thank you ma'am thank you so i have a question on the gear so you use the uh, canon gears right so you were using the canon from the beginning or like you selected yes, it yes. later yeah yeah i was uh, using canon from the beginning just because you know uh, 
I didn't have anything much in my mind when I started like photography. So I just okay, whatever gear like it's Canon is a very known gear. So was Nikon, but uh, I think uh, just you know, it was just a random choice. It was not a particular choice. So when I got first Canon, then I got got used to that. So I think I, my first camera was Canon 450D. 450D, huh? Yes, something like that. And then I got immediately the Canon 100-400 lens. Then uh, 100. Uh, then uh, I got a Canon 300mm f4. Then I got a Canon 50D. Then a Canon 7D. So it became like Canon, Canon, Canon. And because of the lens and this thing, it's like, and it's a very good. I mean, when you when you are like, you know, if you uh, are happy with whatever gear you are using, then you don't have to basically change to any other gear. So I am okay with uh, Canon. Uh, I always felt that it's it's very good. Yeah, it it's like thank, you, know, you can use them. It yeah, basically. Good evening, ma'am. Yes, good evening. Uh, ma'am, I have the same question which was already asked in the chat box, ma'am. Uh, will mm -hmm. using the spotlight on the nocturnal birds affect or disturb them? Yes, uh, so that is what I'm, I was telling, like I forgot to tell that. Um, yeah, any kind of night photography is disturbing definitely for the birds. I'm sure I agree to that. But uh, what I uh, uh, do uh, or I make it a point is that I, if, when I use the uh, flashlight, uh, basically try to fo focus below the eyes so that, you know, you get the bird lit up and then you can make your shot. So I try not to disturb the bird right in the eye. So you, you get the good shot even if you focus down below. It's like, you know, belly or the chest. You get that light up phenomena. I mean, light up kind of aura and then, you know, you can shoot it. So yeah, it is disturbing, definitely disturbing, I'm sure. Thank you, ma'am. Sure, thanks. Any more questions? Uh, ma'am, ma final question, ma'am. Yeah, sure. Uh, how do you manage your uh, personal life and wedding life, ma'am? Like, uh, are you just waiting, you go to the R on the wed, and like your family members getting out. Uh, how do you manage, ma'am? Like, uh, like my daddy says, don't go that just to do the study, focus on the study. Like, don't go, that is no matter. Only the focus on the study, study, study. Uh, like, uh, how do you manage, ma'am? Uh, now it is the time for you to study. For me, I have finished my studies, isn't it? So it's it's for me. I'm at a better position, yeah. But yeah, it's 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 a lot of support from our people, whoever it is, our friends, our our immediate family members. That's very important. Otherwise, uh, we cannot peacefully bird or anywhere for that matter. They have to have the trust in us also. Whenever we go, like my mom will be very 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 worried. Like especially when I travel to Namdafa and all, like there are no phone range for phone phone connection for like you know for many days. So uh, she would be worried, but she wouldn't show that. So uh, so this is the kind of, uh, you know, trust they have in us. And also we have to have our own kind of uh, this thing. And when you have to study, you have to really study, right? So this is not basically like, I don't think it's a, it's a career option. I mean, many people might be making career out, out of it. But first, like when we have to finish our study, we I used to work. And then I kind of got an opportunity or like, you know, support from our my family. Uh, to uh, proceed with this. So I am basically lucky in that. But we need to do our duty first, first whenever we are studying, we need to finish our studies. I really thank you, ma'am. I just feel very comfortable to you, ma'am. Like, uh, yeah. I just in lockdown time, I'm, I just uh, attend so many lectures, uh, goes to, uh, in meantime, I just very comfortable to you, ma'am. Really, thank you so much, ma'am. Sure, sure, anytime. I mean, you you would get my email email ID or Facebook and Insta from uh, Dhruv or Ali, uh, and uh, many people uh, might know me. So you can co contact me anytime, no problem. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you so much. Okay, if no more questions, uh, I think like we can wind up because like Madam was talking for a long time. And she oh, I am fine. Smart. I'm so happy. <laughs> birds, I mean, no, I like uh, I I do not get a sense about the time. You know, I have yeah. that kind of thing towards it. Yeah, that's yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, maybe enough. No? So, can you begin to move? Yes, yes, I yes, think yes. Uh, we can wrap up.
cool so uh so thank you uh, so much ma'am it was an amazing session uh, we can see the happy feedbacks in the chat box uh, you have taken us through a uh, different worlds world all, all together so the pictures of rare species of birds and mammals in different in different areas and their locations the story behind the pictures and the uh, rigs you have used and all it was so nice awesome uh, we look forward to see you again in our programs uh, and we are re we are really sorry for the inconvenience caused in between i hope google bring more feature for google Meet to make the experience better let's see uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Also, I would like to thank all the members for participating uh, this fantastic session. Uh, we'll be sharing the recordings uh, with you soon. And uh, tomorrow is our last day of our wildlife week, and we have one more last session tomorrow. The topic is wildlife. Yeah. So the topic is uh, wildlife of Central India by David Raju. Please join us tomorrow. Thank you so much again, all the people. It was an amazing. session thank you ma'am again good night sure thank you bye yeah all yeah. right right thank you ma'am uh, we thank got a uh, lot of new places to go no <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs>